I truly never thought I would be one of these YouTubers, but here we are today. Basically, I bought some books, I've read some books, and I'm here to talk to you about them today. And when I say I bought some books, I really bought some books, okay? And I'm not ashamed of it. Oh my gosh, books are heavy. Okay. Let's put these down. For those of you who have been on my channel for a while, I want to give you guys some context as to how this obsession began. Basically, one of my New Year's resolutions was to read more. I've always loved reading. I've grown up in a family who loves reading. However, when I got to the end of high school and into uni, I just didn't have time for it anymore and I kind of just put it on the back burner. And this year, due to the global pandemic and also finishing uni last year and now just being able to come home from work and not have to study for like three hours every day, I now have the time to kind of allow myself to read again. I've never really stopped reading, but I definitely wasn't reading at a very fast pace because I didn't have a lot of time. And now I am really back on that bandwagon and I have really become immersed <laughs> in reading again. And not only that, I also blame booktube. I have discovered the part of the internet that is literally dedicated to people talking about books and I am thoroughly enjoying it. My favorite YouTubers so far, I've mentioned this before, are or booktubers, whatever they're called. Guys, I'm still a newbie. I'm still a rookie. Please don't, please don't give me hate. Are Noelle Gallagher, I think that's how you pronounce her name, and also Kat from Paperback Dreams, which some of you guys recommended me to watch her, but I'd already started watching her. Already a fan, really enjoying her stuff as well. I think I also follow a few others here and there, but those are my two favorites. If you guys have any more recommendations, let me know. Would love to check them out. But yeah, I've started talking about books a lot more in my vlogs, and some of you suggested that maybe I should do a dedicated book video for those of you who want to see it. I don't think it's very many of you, but if you want to see more of these in the future, let me know. Maybe like once every three months or so I could do a video like this. I don't know. But today I'm just going to show you the books that I've either read really recently, I am currently reading, or ones that I have bought in anticipation to read. Also, I do have a Goodreads. Recently got on that bandwagon as well. Don't really know how it works. Don't really know if it's worth following me on there, but... I have it and I really enjoy using it to look up how others have reviewed books. It's been very helpful. The first book I want to talk about is 12 Rules for Life by Jordan B. Peterson. This is one that I'm currently reading at the moment. It is my non-fiction book of choice currently. I definitely go through non-fiction a lot slower because I really have to be in the right headspace to be able to read these kind of books. I want to be awake and alert enough to really take in the information. I take notes as I'm going along. I annotate things. So it definitely takes me a lot longer to get through these books. I did buy this book before realizing how much controversy this guy has around him and I haven't really done enough research to know exactly what that controversy is. All that I know is a lot of people hate him, a lot of people love him. I'm just going to read his book and see. He's a psychologist so I really really like it. I don't know if I'm very good at describing books but I would say this is kind of mini essays in each chapter about why you should behave a certain way and what kind of benefits you can gain from that and I'm thoroughly enjoying it so far. Haven't finished this but really like it. The next book I finished recently was The Girl on the Train. I know this is a movie, I know a lot of people have seen the movie, a lot of people rave about it. I'm gonna try to get through these pretty quick because I've got a lot to show you but we'll see how we go. I would say this was like a four out of five for me. I really 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 liked it. Haven't seen the movie and I don't know if I would have enjoyed it as much if I had seen the movie so if you haven't seen it and would like to read it would definitely recommend. I'd love to check out more of Paula Hawkins books because I really like the way she writes. I didn't love the characters necessarily, they didn't give me a lot to love about them, but the story was very intriguing, so really liked that. The next book that I actually finished like two days ago is Unfiltered by Lily Collins. I was gifted this book a couple of years back by a really good friend of mine who has really good book recommendations, but sadly I did not enjoy this one. I feel like I would have loved it in high school, to be completely honest. I think a lot of the issues that she went through in her young years and things that she kind of targeted in this book are things that I would have really valued and really appreciated when I was in high school around grade 10 but I've kind of just gotten past the point where it's probably very useful to me so I gave this like two stars I think if I'm remembering correctly it was okay it wasn't bad I didn't hate it I just didn't really love it We Were Liars by E. Lockhart I feel like this is one of the most famous books on the internet maybe that's a lie I don't know I don't know that much about books on the internet but as soon as I started reading again I had so many recommendations from you guys on my Instagram and my DM saying you need to read this book from what I've gathered it kind of had its 15 minutes of fame a few years back when like everyone read it. I feel like I would have loved this even more in high school because I would have been able to relate to the characters a little bit more because it is like that uh, like younger adult kind of 
age bracket in terms of the characters but I just really really enjoyed the style of writing that this was I really liked that I was shocked at the ending a lot of people love it because of the ending it's such like a big shock and you're like oh my gosh no way and I would agree that was probably why I really enjoyed it it's also really short really easy to read if you're trying to get into reading I would really recommend this because I haven't heard of many people who dislike it Although there are some. But I think there are people who dislike every book. So I really liked it. I would give it like a 4 out of 5 as well. I read this in like 2 days. It was a really quick read. A really easy read. And yeah, it has some good shock factor right at the end. Guys, I started my Hoover journey. Colleen Hoover is a romance author. I don't know if she writes other things to be honest. I know that she's famous for her romance novels. I actually first heard about her from M. Carey. If you guys know M. Carey. She raves about Colleen Hoover. I think she's probably read all of her books. I'm not really sure. It seems like she has a lot of books. I picked November 9 as my first Colleen Hoover book because the story sounded really interesting to me and it was one of the ones online that wasn't sold out because I ordered a few books from bookdepository.com. I think I ordered these two and another Colleen Hoover book which I'll talk about in a second. They took a long time to get here but a lot of her books were... Whoops. A lot of her books were out of stock, which I guess is a good sign. But I had a lot of fun reading this. It was my first romance book in a really long time. And it was just a lot of fun. I read this straight after finishing The Girl on the Train, which is like a mystery thriller, maybe? I'm not really sure about genres. So this was a really fun one to read right after a very intense thriller mystery book that really kind of got in your head. If you guys don't know, November 9 is about a guy and a girl who happen to meet on November 9 kind of by chance. I'm trying not to ruin the story also. I'm not going to have any spoilers in this in this video. They meet one day on November 9. Fallon is a girl. She's an aspiring actress. She used to be a pretty successful actress when she was a younger girl, but she actually went through a fire. This is not spoiling anything. She went through a fire and got significantly burnt through that experience and therefore has found it really hard to get a lot of acting jobs so she's kind of trying to get back into that scene and she meets Ben or Benton I think his full name is which was very interesting. I like the name choices. Who is an aspiring novel writer or author, I guess. I think they're 18 when they meet and they really, really love spending time together. They get along really, really well and they find a lot of joy in spending time together. But neither of them want to commit to a long-term relationship. And actually that same night after spending the day together, Fallon is heading on a plane and moving to New York City and they're both in LA, I think. So there's no way that she wanted to do long distance. So they were just like, what are we gonna do? So they decide to meet up the following year on November 9 and every November 9 after that for I think about five years and it goes through you only get to read about what happens on November 9th every single year and you just get to see how their lives change and how their relationship changes through the years and it's a really cool story and a lot of stuff happens I will say it is so unrealistic because either things are like too perfect and I'm just like, I would be reading and be like, this just wouldn't happen. Or there were so many things that went wrong that you were just like, surely they're not this unlucky, you know? But it was a really fun read and I definitely want to read more of Hoover's books, especially as just some fun, light reads. Continuing with another of Hoover's books, we are actually now moving into the books that I haven't yet read. So all of those ones I have read or started reading and moving into the ones that I haven't yet read. This one is called It Ends With Us. I don't really know much about it. I don't really know what it's about. I think I've heard that this is one of her more famous novels, so I'm excited to read it. I'm assuming it's a romance novel of some type. We'll see how it goes. I'm leaving this until after I've read a few more like intense books and need a bit of a break from those. But yeah, I'm excited to read this. Moving on, all of the rest of these books are from either op shops or secondhand bookstores. And I would definitely say that that is the way to go if you want to buy books and you have the time to be able to look through op shops and secondhand bookstores because I got some really good deals. The other ones that I got from Book Depository, I think I got three for about 55 so I think they were between $15 to $20 each. The Girl on the Train I got for a dollar at a Salvo store. The rest of these were a lot cheaper because I got them secondhand. Um, the ones that I found at op shops were like between $1 and $3 which is incredible. Love that. And there were two that I got from a used bookstore, which I'll mention later. The next one I got is You Had Me at Hello. This is another romance. Apparently, according to the back, it's about a guy and a girl. And apparently they were together at some point, but then they broke up, don't know why. And it's been 10 years since they last saw each other, but they randomly bump into each other one day. 
and I assume the rest of the story kind of goes from there. So I think this will be a fun one to read, another one that I'll kind of save for once I've read something a bit more intense and need a bit of a break from my mind being so like, what's the word? Overwhelmed, I guess. And I got that for $3 from a Lifeline store, so love that. From the same store, I also got The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. I feel like this is one of the books that I missed out on during my little reading hiatus during high school and university. It seems like this was a really, really, really popular book at one point. I have never heard anything about it until I got back into booktube and it seems like one of those books that like everyone read that I just didn't. I don't even know what it's about but I've heard some really good things about it and I'm pretty sure it's one of Noelle Gallagher's favourite books so it must be good. I also picked up The Last Anniversary by Le Leanne Mor Moriarty. I don't really know how to say any author's names, I apologise. I have read two books from this author already. I read Big Little Lies and Nine Perfect Strangers. So when I saw this in an op shop for like $2, I was like, I'll get it. I enjoyed her other books that I've read. I wouldn't say they're my favourite, but I enjoyed them enough to pick this one up. Would I purchase it brand new? Maybe not. I don't think I'll love it, but I know that I'll enjoy it. And her books are always quite intriguing. So I don't really know what this one is about. Apparently about a girl who inherits a house. And apparently everyone knows something that she doesn't about this house. I don't really know much else, so we'll see. And then later at a different op shop, I found this one for a dollar, which is the same author and it's called The Husband's Secret. And this is actually the one that I'm currently reading now. On the back it just says, Cecilia, devoted mother and successful Tupperware consultant, has found a letter from her husband. And apparently it says on the letter, only to be opened in the event of my death. I haven't read very far into it, I've literally just started it. So she's kind of debating whether or not she should open the letter. I'm assuming she will and I'm assuming she finds out something that maybe she doesn't want to know or maybe makes her more confused. A lot of people say that Leanne Moriarty kind of takes really normal suburban people and normal situations, people who just don't seem that interesting and creates a really interesting story around them, which is definitely the case in the other books that I've read from her. She kind of takes a normal person doing a normal thing and then kind of finding out something completely unusual and then, you know, kind of creates this whole story around it. So I do really enjoy these, like I said. I think it'll be good. I don't think it'll be amazing. I do recommend her books, but they're not like the best of the best. I can't put them down, whatever else, but they're like a three out of five, maybe a four out of five, depending on which story they are. The next three books I actually bought because I was just trying to reach the F plus minimum at the op shops that I was looking at because a lot of the op shops that I go to, it's like one or two dollars for a book, but then I only find like one or two that I really want. And so then I have to kind of just make up the F plus minimum. Maybe I should just start carrying cash maybe that could be a solution to this problem maybe I should stop buying books maybe that would be a solution to this problem however they all look quite interesting I think they're all either mysteries or thrillers I'm not completely sure they had decent reviews on Goodreads so I'll take it. If you guys have read any of these books, let me know if you enjoyed them. Maybe they're terrible. I don't know. This one is called I See You by Claire McIntosh. It says on the front the number one bestseller, so surely it's good, right? When Zoe Walker sees her photo in the classified section of a London newspaper, she is determined to find out why it's there. There's no explanation, just a grainy image, a website address, and a phone number. She takes it home to her family, who are convinced it's just someone who looks like Zoe. But the next day, the advert shows a photo of a different woman, and another day after that. Is it a mistake? Is it a coincidence? Or is someone keeping track of every move they make? It honestly just sounded really interesting. Oh, so this is a psychological thriller, it says on the back. I don't know, it just intrigued me, so I got it. This one, I'm a bit skeptical about, because I'm just a bit like, I don't know. It doesn't sound like something I would typically pick up, but this is called I Came to Say Goodbye, and it's by Caroline Overington. A young woman pushed through the front doors. Staff would later say they thought the woman was a new mother returning to her child and in a way she was. She walked into the nursery where a baby girl lay sleeping. The infant didn't wake when the woman placed her gently in the shopping bag she had brought with her. There is CCTV footage of what happened next and most Australians would have seen it either on the internet or on the news. The woman walked out of the car park towards an old Corolla. For a moment she held the child gently against her breath and with her eyes closed she smelled her. She then clipped the infant into the car, got in and drove off. That is where the footage ends. It isn't where the story ends, however. It's not even where the story starts. So is this like a real story? I don't really know. I don't know anything about it apart from that. And the last one out of that little group that I got is called The Client by John 
Grisham. And apparently in this one, there's a murder. No one really knows what happens except for like an 11 year old boy. And they're trying to like find out this information from him, but he doesn't want to tell them. And the killer apparently is still in this story somewhere and wants to get rid of the kid basically. Or so it seems from what I've gathered. And the last two I actually picked up today. And I picked these ones up from a used bookstore in Brisbane. It's in West End, it's called Bent Books if you wanna check it out if you're from that area. And I love that store. I spent like half an hour in there today and I could easily spend hours in there because it is just so amazing to me. It's like an op shop but just like full of beautiful books and I think they're all pretty decent books. If you go there once you walk in you can also walk out the back and into a shipping container which is also full of even more books. Definitely recommend checking that out as well. It's just so cool and I think it's just a small business so of course, I want to support those people, especially during a pandemic. I wouldn't say it's necessarily like the cheapest thing in the world. These books were both $10 each, which is definitely cheaper than brand new, but, but not as cheap as obviously the op shop books that I bought. If I can buy books secondhand, I will. But if there are certain ones that I'm looking for and I can't seem to find secondhand, I will buy them from Big W or a bookstore or online, wherever it may be. The first one I picked up from there is Gone Girl. I'm sure everyone has already heard about Gone Girl. I haven't seen the movie and after I read the Girl on the Train. I had so many comments saying that I would really enjoy reading Gone Girl. So I found this one. I picked it up. I've heard really good things about this author and some of the other novels that she's written. I would love to read Sharp Objects, but I couldn't find it today in my search. So, but if I do end up seeing it, I definitely will pick it up. Even though I haven't read this one, I don't even know what her writing is like. I've just heard good things. And the last book in this video is by Sally Hepworth and it's called The Family Next Door. I just picked this up because it looked really interesting. It was in the romance section, but from the back it doesn't seem like it would be a romance novel. Like that isn't the first thing that comes into my head when I read that blurb, but I guess it is one. When I looked this book up on Goodreads to see if it was worth buying or not, a lot of people love another book by this author, which they also actually did have in the bookstore today. But when I read the back of that one, it just didn't look as interesting to me as this one did. So I picked this one instead, even though it had worse ratings on Goodreads. It just, it just seemed like a better choice for me. But it's basically about a girl who or a lady that lives in a house. New neighbors move in next door and she's curious about them and I'm assuming this story kind of revolves around that. That's all I have to say about that one. So I definitely have a lot of books on my hands now. So if any of my friends wanna come over and borrow a book, hit me up, let me know, I'd love to share. I go through books fairly quickly depending on how much time I have. These four which I mentioned at the beginning I've been through in about two weeks. So I don't know how long it'll take me to get through all of these. I'm not gonna let myself buy some for a while probably but yeah I'm excited if you guys want to see more book videos in the future please let me know I don't know if anyone's gonna find this interesting but I had a lot of fun talking about these books I didn't realize how fun it would be to just sit and chat about these sort of things again if you guys know of other booktubers that you would really recommend let me know especially Australian ones that could be fun and if you guys have any book recommendations that I can add to my TBR please let me know I would love to hear your favorite books so I can add them to my list and maybe eventually buy them and talk about them. Or maybe just get a library card and borrow them so I don't keep spending my whole life savings on books. I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in my next video very soon. Good.